Hi everyone and welcome back to Nusantara Folktales with me Heidi and um, actually today I wasn't planning to do a video but we're going out for lunch and I'm kind of dressed and I look half decent so I thought I would just do a quick video but then I had to decide what folktale to tell you and um, at the moment my mind is just full of weird tigers because I'm working on the weird tiger chapter of my novel they were initially supposed to be Weird Tiger twins because I'm like obsessed with twins. I think they are freakishly alluring. <laughs> no offense to twins. I love twins. But I wanted to explore this duality, this kind of like freakish, uncanny nature of having someone who looks exactly like you, identical to you. But anyway, Weird Tigers are very popular in fiction. You can find them everywhere now. Um, my favorite Weird Tiger book actually is by Ika Kurniawan, the Indonesian author. He wrote Man Tiger, this one, and uh, it won the Man Booker International Prize in 2016. So I have the English translated version here, but I also have the, the original Indonesian um, version here. Look at that cover look at that cover i love it um this is of course in indonesian language and um, it was a bit difficult to read but you know i got the gist of it and i actually prefer this version so um i wrote two i think weird tiger stories in my book nusantara a sea of tales um, the first one is called Danjai and the Weird Tiger's Sister. And I got that story from this book here, 17 Years Among the Sea Dayaks of Borneo by Edwin H. Gomez. I have a lot of books. Uh, this was under chapter 12, Three Dayak Legends. And um, yeah, it's Danjai and the Weird Tiger's Sister. It's like... A fascinating story about weird tigers set in Sarawak. Um, but the other story which I want to tell you today is set in Semenanjung, Malaysia, in Malacca actually, uh, in a place called Tanjung Rimau. So of course you know Rimau means tiger. And uh, I put my own spin on this story and I hope you enjoy it. It's called The Cloth Merchant of Tanjung Rimau. Once there was a cloth merchant who had a deep, dark secret. He looked like an ordinary man most of the time, but no one knew that he had a magic tail, which he often used to turn himself into a tiger. The cloth merchant loved the taste of human flesh, and in order to hunt, he traveled from village to village, pretending to sell silks and satins. He would hide in the shadows until he was sure that all the men were out working in the fields or on the fishing boats. Once the men were gone, he would come out to look for his next victim, the wives and daughters who were left at home to take care of the house. Hello, my dear. Would you like to see my wares? I have silks and satins, cotton and lace, something pretty for one as lovely as you. He charmed the ladies with his sweet smile and gentle eyes. When the ladies looked at him, they saw a small man who walked with a limp and they did not feel threatened at all. They saw his bales of cotton and thought that perhaps it wouldn't be a bad idea to get a little something for themselves. Would you like to see some fine silks from China, my dear? It just came off a ship today. I can give you a special offer. He licked his lips and smiled. And if the ladies had been paying attention, they would have noticed his teeth which were a little bit too sharp, and the look of hunger hiding just behind his eyes. But the ladies never took any notice of the cloth merchant. They were too preoccupied with the beautiful silks and satins he carried on his back. They invited him in and made him tea as he spread out the cloth on their wooden floors. Look at this fine workmanship one. Look how this pink silk brightens your eyes. As the ladies fell under the charm of his beautiful cloth, they did not notice the merchant looking down at the floor as if searching for something. Always his head moved from side to side, searching, looking until at last he found it, a floorboard with a small hole. 
Once he located the special place, he would sit down and slowly, slowly unfurl his long yellow tail into the hole. Puan, this print is perfect for you. Your husband will love you even more when he sees you wearing it, he would say as he sipped his cup of tea and stroked his reddish-brown beard. As he sat on top of the floorboard with the hole, his tail would grow longer and longer. Slowly, he could feel the tiger in him rise to his chest. He closed his eyes and waited. By this time, the ladies were so mesmerized by his merchandise that they would pay him no attention. Slowly, the transformation would take place as his human body changed into that of a tiger. A low growl, a powerful lunge, and it was all over. All that was left was blood splattered over the beautiful materials laid out on the floor. Soon, people began to look out for the cloth merchant who was killing the women in the area. The men decided to lay a trap and waited under the biggest house in the next village. As usual, the cloth merchant appeared when the sun was high in the sky. The village was quiet and you could see that all the men were away at work. This was the perfect time for a hunt. He approached the biggest house which belonged to the Penghulu, the chief. Inside, he could hear a young girl singing to herself and he licked his lips in anticipation. The girl was the daughter of the chief who had volunteered to lure the weird tiger into her home. When the cloth merchant called out to her, she appeared at the door and smiled. Good morning, Che. I have some beautiful cloth for a sweet girl like you. Can I come in and show you? He asked. Why not? Of course. Please come in, she said, smiling sweetly. The merchant walked in and immediately saw the perfect spot to sit. Near the window was a small hole in the floorboards. He licked his lips and sat down. Slowly, his tail began to unfurl and fall through the cracks in the floor. Unfortunately for the cloth merchant, the chief was waiting under the house with ten strong men from the village. They watched as the weird tiger's tail began to fall through the hole in the floor above. With a smile and a nod to the other men, the chief grabbed hold of the tiger's tail and pulled. The cloth merchant felt a pain he had never felt before. What was this? He looked down at the floor and tried to retrieve his tail. Feeling surprised, he looked up and saw the girl was smiling at him. We have you now, tiger, she said. The cloth merchant immediately changed into his tiger form to escape, but the men under the house held onto his tail with an iron grip and refused to let go. The tiger let out a ferocious roar and leapt up, but his tail remained inside the crack. Unable to stand it, the tiger lunged out of the open window and fled into the jungle, leaving his severed tail behind. Under the house, there was much triumphant shouting as the men celebrated their victory. Without his magic tail, the cloth merchant was forced to remain in his tiger body forever and roamed around the nearby jungle alone and tailless. The End <laughs>